Chapter 8, Estimating Single Population Parameters. In this video, we will learn about confidence interval estimates for a single population proportion, as well as how to find the required sample size. Recall our formula for a sample proportion is x divided by n. We also learned how to calculate the standard error for a sample proportion in Chapter 7. That's this formula right here. In this chapter, we are estimating population parameters such as proportions because we don't know what the population proportion is. Therefore, we will use the sample proportion for our estimate of the standard error. So you can see here in chapter eight, we are modifying the standard error formula to use the sample proportion or the p-bar in there. Now, although we're working with proportions, the general format for the confidence interval estimate is still the same structure, where we have a point estimate, in this case, it's the sample proportion, plus or minus the critical Z value times the standard error. So here's our formula right here, where P bar means sample proportion, plus or minus, here's our critical Z value, and here's our standard error of our proportions. The nice thing with proportions is that we only have one version we have to learn, and it's only going to use the critical Z value. And it's the same Z values that we've seen in our commonly used table before. You do not ever have to worry about T values when it comes to proportions. So we only have to learn one way of calculating the confidence interval whereas the sample mean had two ways depending on whether or not you knew the population standard deviation. Recall in chapter seven when we learned about sample, sampling distributions, the sample distribution for a sample proportion is also bell-shaped, which allows us to use a lot of the same appendices and concepts as what we did with the sampling distribution for sample means. So let's look at an example. Bed Bath & Beyond is interested in estimating the proportion of the population who received a coupon and used it. Say a random sample of 100 individuals has been selected to receive the coupon and 22 people redeemed it. Develop and interpret a 99% confidence interval estimate for the population proportion. We need to first determine our sample proportion of people who use the coupon. So to do that, will take x divided by n, or the 22 people who used the coupon divided by the 100 people in our sample. So our p-bar is 0.22. Now our z-value is based on the 99% confidence level in our table. So we can see that our z is going to be 2.575, and our little n, or our sample size, is the 100 individuals. So we'll go ahead and plug all of that into our formula. As you can see here though, where we've got one minus P, we've simplified it, whereas one minus 0.22, or our sample proportion, gives us 0.78. So in other words, this 0.22 is the proportion of people who use the coupon, and this 0.78 is the proportion of people who didn't use the coupon. Then we'll go ahead and go through the same process we did that we've learned so far about confidence interval estimates by first solving the right side of our formula by solving the margin of error, which is on the right side of our plus or minus sign. So when I take 0.22 times 0.78, divide it by 100, then square root the whole thing. You want to make sure to square root all of this and not just the top numbers. Then you'll take that and multiply it by 2.575, and that will give us a margin of error of 0 0.1067. To get my lower and upper limits, I'll go ahead and subtract my margin of error and add my margin of error to 0.22. So we get 0.1133 and 0.3267. Thus, based on our sample data of 100 individuals, with 99% confidence, we can conclude that the population proportion who will redeem the coupon is somewhere between 0.1133 and 0.3267. In other words, it means 11.33% to 32.67% of people will use the coupon.
Now you might think, wow, that's a big interval. So if we want to improve our margin of error and thus make our confidence interval estimate smaller, we would either lower our confidence level and or increase our sample size. Let's practice using problem 54 from the textbook. A random sample of 200 items reveals that 144 of the items have a particular attribute of interest. Very generic problem. What is the point estimate for the population proportion for all items with this attribute? So we'll go ahead and take our formula of x divided by n to get our sample proportion. So I'm going to take my 144 items divided by 200 items to get a sample proportion of 0.72. In part B, you're asked to find, in part B, it asks you to use the sample to develop a 95% confidence interval estimate for the population proportion P of all items with this attribute. So in step one, we don't have to define the population or variable of interest really because there's no story. But in step two, uh, we'll go ahead and identify our sample size. That's 200 items were sampled. Then in part three, we need to find our critical value. So the confidence level that you were asked for was 95%. So I go to my table and at 95%, our Z value is 1.96. Now again, uh, here in step four, which you already did in part A, we found our sample proportion, which was 0.72. So we'll go ahead and plug in our different variables into the formula. So as you can see here, I've got my sample proportion of 0.72 in the front for my point estimate, plus or minus my z value of 1.96, and then here's my standard error, where I take my sample proportion of 0.72 and I multiply it by 1 minus 0.72. And then I divide it by 200 and then square root the whole thing. So I'm going to solve for the right side over here, my margin of error, and that tells me my confidence interval estimate is 0 0.72 plus or minus 0 0.0622. And I'll go ahead and subtract and add my margin of error from my point estimate. And that'll give me a lower limit of 0.6578 and an upper limit of 0.7822. And of course, we have to figure out, well, what's our required sample size when we're estimating a population proportion? So here in this second box, is our formula to find the required sample size for estimating a population proportion. Similar to the required sample size for a population mean, we have z squared and our margin of error squared. What's different now is this piece right here where we're working with proportions. So we're going to take um, p times 1 minus p. So let's look at an example. A marketing research firm wishes to develop a 95% confidence interval estimate for the proportion of customers in a market area that will have a favorable response to new advertisement. They want their estimate to have a margin of error of plus or minus 0 0.015. In other words, they want a margin of error of 1.5%. A pilot sample of n equals 40 people showed that 33 had a favorable response how many additional people should be surveyed. So here we have to find our sample proportion. So we'll take the 33 people who liked our ad divided by the 40 people we sampled. That gives us a sample proportion of 0.825. Our Z value is based on the 95% confidence. So I look here and that's 1.96. And the desired margin of error is 0.015. So plugging in all of our numbers into the formula, I'm going to take 1.96 squared times our P of 0.8215 times its complement, or 1 minus P. In this case, it's 0.175. Then I'm going to divide that by 0.015 squared, and that gives me 2,465.03. Again, even if my decimal is very, very low, I have to round up because I want to have my minimum sample size. If I'm shy of one, that means my confidence interval estimate is not good enough because I don't have a big enough sample. So always round up. Now, since we had a pilot sample of 40, I don't need to get another 2,466 more participants, but rather I can use the 40 and find the difference 
to get a total of 2,466 when all is said and done. So we'll go ahead and subtract our required sample size of 2,466 by our pilot sample of 40. So we only need to survey 2,426 more participants and then combine that with our original sample or our pilot sample of 40 to get the minimum required sample size. Now let's go ahead and do problem 52 in our textbook. Time Magazine Company is planning to survey customers to determine the proportion who will renew their subscription for the coming year. The magazine wants to estimate the population proportion with 95% confidence and a margin of error equal to plus or minus 0 0.02. In other words, 2%. What sample size is required? Now here we have a nice story, so let's make sure we understand our population and our variable of interest. In this case, we want to know who's going to renew their subscription, meaning these are current magazine subscribers. So in step two, we're going to make sure we identify our confidence level. That's right here at 95%. And going to our little table, or by now, hopefully you might have memorized our common Z value at 95% is 1.96. Then in step three, we want to make sure we identify the margin of error in our story which was 0 0.02. Now in step four, on this slide, but also on the worksheet, I wanna highlight, and in the textbook, if a pilot sample exists, like we saw in the previous example, you will compute the sample proportion and use that to approximate your population proportion. However, if there is no pilot sample, we're going to use a P of 0.5 to be conservative. In other words, we're saying there's a 50-50 chance. So our P in this story, because we do not have a pilot sample, will be 0.5. So now we can go ahead and plug in all of our variables. We'll take 1.96 squared times 0.5 times 0.5 again, because one minus 0.5 is 0.5, and then divide it by our margin of error of 0.02 squared that will give us 2,401. Now note, that was a perfect number. There's no decimal, so I don't need to round up. But when you see this number, it might irk you a bit and you think, oh, you know what? I wanna round down to get a nice round number of 2,400. Do not do that, because then you will have not have met the required sample size in order to develop a good confidence interval estimate. So again, to remind you, the higher the confidence, the, the larger the sample size you need, the lower the margin of error you want, again, the larger the sample size you need, and depending on how much variation, you'll need a larger sample size as well. So if you have any questions, just let me know.